This is an artist representation of an ecosystem. You can see multiple different plants, animals. You can see lots of stuff there. I want you to pause for a minute and just think, where is the energy coming from in this diagram? Okay, so you might have realized it's this um, individual over here. It is the sun. It's where all the energy from this ecosystem comes from. You might think, well, how is this raccoon getting its energy from the sun? But the sun's light energy goes to the trees, the grass, the algae, the um, lily pads, pond weeds, all the plants that are here that are green and can photosynthesize, which is the topic we just looked at. Their energy is used to build that plant up and allow it to take up nutrients from the soil. Your herbivores, such as your deer um, and possibly your turtle, I'm not that kind of uh, zoologist, um, will eat those green plants. They, in turn, will be eaten by things like your um, raccoon and your dragon and your wolf. Um, and energy will then go up what we call the food chain. So as the sun is where the energy comes from for our ecosystem. All living organisms need food to survive and the energy initially comes from that sun. The organisms in the ecosystem can be either classed as producers, which is a very small and easy to identify group of organisms, and everything else is a consumer. Our, our producers are green plants, um, and they are able to produce their own food using photosynthesis. Until maybe 20 years ago, scientists thought the only way that energy could get into a food chain was photosynthesis. And while they were on the bottom of the deepest part of the sea, they found an exception to this, which is called chemisynthesis, uh, where organisms can take high energy particles from hydrothermal vents and turn those into the energy to start a food chain. Apart from that, <laughs> very we uh, small um, exception, all energy in the world comes from the sun. We have consumers. Now, consumers are everything else, because if you can't make your own energy using the sun's light energy, you have to eat something else. So you might be at the top of the food chain, which means you eat other animals, and those animals might eat other animals. But if you work far enough down, one of your prey, or your prey's prey, or your prey's 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 prey, 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 whatever, will eat a green plant. And it's from that green plant that the sun's energy enters the ecosystem. So everything that is not a producer, a green plant at the bottom of the food chain, is a consumer. Because you can't produce your own food, you have to consume other organisms to get your energy. So you might already know the definition of some of these things. Think if you can brainstorm it, if you're working as a family, as I know some people do in these, see if anyone else in your family knows the definitions of these. Okay, so a herbivore is something that only eats um, plants. So it gets its energy only from plants. Carnivores, things like these red foxes, uh, vulpes, vulpes, uh, they get their energy only from eating other animals. And omnivores, like us, which is why it's footprints there, get their energy from both plant and animal species. So it's not really about what eats what, it's about where the energy comes from. Energy comes from plants, energy comes from other animals, and energy comes from both plants and animals. So when a carnivore hunts and kills another animal for food, we describe it as a predator. The animal that it kills is called the prey. Now, if you look at parasites, it becomes a little bit more interesting, the difference between things like predators and parasites, and diseases and things. Uh, but for our purposes, when something hunts and kills another animal for its food, it's described as a predator. The thing it hunts and kills is the prey. We need energy for lots of things. We're not going to go through the seven life processes because it's a waste of time, but um, they are very important. So a food chain shows us how that energy transfers through an ecosystem. So it travels in the form of what's called chemical energy. Now, if you've done a physics topic, you might have looked at heat energy. You might have looked at radiation. You might have looked at potential and kinetic um, there's a type of energy called chemical energy, and that's what organisms run on. So a green plant, a producer, can be eaten by a herbivore or by an omnivore. That herbivore or omnivore is called the primary consumer. So the producer is the producer. The thing that eats the producer is a primary consumer. 
What eats that herbivore or omnivore is the secondary consumer and so on. So you get the tertiary and the quaternary uh, consumers as well. So energy flow. We have arrows in these diagrams because we are not showing what eats what. So you might think, well, rabbit eats producer. So the arrow should go from rabbit to producer. But that's not what the arrow shows. The arrow shows the flow of energy in a food chain or in an ecosystem. So it goes producer to rabbit, chocolate rabbit in this case, and from rabbit to fox. So the relationship is called a food chain. This is when it's a single line, not when there's branchy things coming off it. So when there's no branches coming off it, it is a food chain, and each arrow shows the direction of energy flow. These are much too simple to be realistic. In real life, a rabbit doesn't only eat grass, and a fox doesn't only eat rabbits. So this is a nice way to show a simple food chain, um, but it's not necessarily realistic. We always start with a producer. So if you're going to draw a food chain, left to right, it should go producer, and then your primary, and then your secondary. If you're doing it vertically, at the bottom, you should have your producer, and then arrows going away from that to your primary consumer. So see if you can construct a food chain for the following organisms. OK, so you probably find green leaves, and then you draw an arrow facing away from green leaves towards the snail, an arrow facing away from the snail towards the thrush, and an arrow facing away that towards the fox. The producer, the primary consumer, secondary consumer, the tertiary, but also, thrush is the predator of snail, but thrush is the prey of fox, just like snail is the prey of thrush. Very, very interesting. So the arrows show the direction of energy flow. Again, pause the video, have a look, see if you can make uh, each of these as a food chain. Okay, so our answer would probably be grass, arrow, zebra, arrow, lion for A. For the next one, we're looking, always just look for the producer to start us off, so wheat, Arrow, field mouse, arrow, weasel, arrow, owl, sorry. and then uh, where are we? Oak leaf, arrow, green fly, arrow, blackbird, arrow, ladybird. Uh, no, no, maybe not. Oak fly, uh, sorry, oak leaf to green fly to ladybird to blackbird, possibly. The answers, unfortunately, don't come up, which is why I'm just making up. Could webs are essentially the same thing, but instead of saying, one thing in a line. So instead of saying, for my purposes, the only thing rabbits are allowed to eat is grass, we can say, hey, let's look at what they actually eat. So we go into the wild, we we'll watch some rabbits and we say, well, actually, they eat these three things. So let's represent that properly in a diagram. They're much more complicated and they interconnect different food chains together. So if we have acorns, we have an arrow coming off that to this uh, rat and an arrow coming off that to the weasel. But we also have an arrow going to the squirrel. And you might say, hey, maybe that squirrel gets eaten by the owl. And maybe it also gets eaten by this thing here, weasel possibly. Um, and you can see the arrows, you can have as many different arrows coming off as possible. Obviously, the more arrows coming off something, the more the things that eat it are gonna be competing for it. Because there's only a certain number of squirrels. Um, and similarly, there's only a certain number of rats. So the owl and the weasel will be in common petition. So convert the three food chains into one food web. So acorns are eaten by wood pigeons or eaten by foxes, but acorns are also eaten by wood mouses. And the wood mouse is eaten by the fox and the weasel. But the fox gets its energy from the wood pigeon, the wood mouse, and possibly the weasel. I don't know. Let's have a look. Um, using the information below, uh, construct a food web. So remember to start at the bottom. So if we change the number of um, individuals at any level of a food web or food chain, um, we affect the energy in that ecosystem. So if it shows us a food web, which I hope it does, um, yeah, it does. I'll be able to explain this through. So the energy from the sun hits the plant plankton, which is difficult to say, plant plankton, and it turns it into chemical energy. That energy then goes to animal plankton and to blue whales. The blue whale then is not eaten by anything in this food chain. The animal plankton energy goes to shrimps, which goes to herrings and mackerels. 
what happens, we ask ourselves, if, I'm looking for something that, this is, this is more difficult, um, what happens if the animal plankton are completely removed from the food chain? So there's no more animal plankton in the food chain. Let's follow it around. The plant plankton, they celebrate. It's no longer animal plankton eating them. So if you remove that, the predator, if it is removed, you get an increase in the number of prey species. However, biology is all about balance, unfortunately, for the plant plankton. So the blue whale is noticing the animal plankton have disappeared. So it has to hunt more of the plant plankton. So even though technically, technically, the animal plankton levels have gone down, so the plant plankton levels have gone up, the blue whale need to eat more of the plant plankton to get its energy. So actually, the number of plant plankton, it's very difficult to say, will probably stay the same. Because if we remove the animal plankton, the blue whale will have to eat more of the plant plankton. And interestingly, if we remove the animal plankton, everything above it dies because the shrimps no longer have any food source, which means neither do the herring and neither do the mackerels. What would happen to the number of herrings and mackerel if fishermen caught a large number of shrimps? So if the shrimp numbers went down, the mackerel and herring numbers would went, go down as well. This is why food webs need to be as complicated as possible. It's very unlikely the only thing that herrings eat is shrimp. So it's very unlikely the only thing mackerel eat are shrimp. So if as a zoologist you were trying to predict what was happening and you said, oh no, we've got rid of all the shrimps, you might be a bit puzzled if the number of herrings and mackerels didn't decrease. You might think, oh, I've clearly not actually understood this ecosystem properly. So we should be able to give the three terms um, given to the slug in the food chain below. So it is a primary consumer, it is a carnivore, it is prey, it's not a predator because it doesn't really hunt the grass. The arrows in a food chain show the movement of energy, we're ignoring number three. What would happen is the number of grasshoppers if the number of coyotes increased. So the number of grasshoppers if the number of coyotes increased. So more coyotes mean uh, fewer hawks, which means the grass number, uh, grasshopper numbers would probably increase. That seems reasonable, doesn't it? Because if the hawks predator um, went up in number, the hawks would die more often so that they wouldn't eat the grasshoppers as much. But similarly, um, the mouse numbers would probably go up as well, so that might have an effect. Um, the vultures would still need something to eat, um, et cetera, et cetera. So if the coyote numbers went down, you could say, well, the vultures no longer have coyotes to eat, so they have to eat more mice. Because there's uh, more mice getting eaten, the hawks don't have as much food, so again, actually, they probably um, decrease the number. In this example, everything actually means that the grasshopper numbers would increase. Hopefully that kind of made sense. Um, have a wee go at the uh, the Google Forms questions and please do ask if you're stuck, okay? Yeah.